happy when people die. Well, who's supposed to be happy when people die? Ah, uh huh? Say it loud, Jane Brown. <laughs> loud and proud. We are. Ain't that crazy? I just asked that question quietly, but who's happy when someone? We're supposed to rejoice. And then I went over and it got kind of quiet, and I didn't even be playing because I just studied all this. It's crazy how we got this thing so messed up. They born in this world, and guess what we doing? Dancing and rejoicing, and when they and it's supposed to be the opposite. They go on home to glory. We're supposed to be dancing and rejoicing, and when they born in this world, we're supposed to be like, "Oh Lord, you don't know what you're born into. You you should have stayed on in that womb where you was covered." Come on now, it's crazy, and I have to be careful because preaching it. All the way back, to, I tried to get in the task with my mama to being able to bury my sister and all the different things, my great, all the other stuff that happened. How did I get death so messed up? And I just gave you a title. I'm told you, I love this technology because now that makes you, you write and take your pictures of it because I know I'm getting ready to unravel some stuff that so many of you, because this week was an eye opener for me. To really look at that, I said, Lord, you got me going through this a few verses at a time because I'm trying to teach you something because you got to get, get the people's attention. That death is a beautiful thing. Amen. But I said, hold on to this word loosely. Hold on to them loosely. I'm the Alpha and Omega. I'm the only one that knows 68 wonderful years is the same as 38 to him. It's the same as 2. It's the same as 21. All this different thing that we go through, whenever God came to get them, it's all inclusive to him, not us. We all want the promise. But then I ask, why do you want the promise? The promise is 70 years. Why would you want to live 70 years if God got your leftovers all 70 years? There was no joy in it. There was no peace in it. There was no rest in it. Because if God is giving your leftovers, there's no peace, there's no joy, and there's no rest in it. Yes, I, yes, I, true words. I'm telling you, it messed me up. Even though we wanted them here. And you know we know the story. And I was sharing this this week with your husband. I said, we ought to be thankful. What a message. An on time message of rejoicing. Because when I look back over my life, Majority of my life was living for Donald Wayne Smith yes. versus living for the Lord. And I don't know how you can look at it now, and I'm thankful. At 32, I had an awakening, and I ain't even got it all the way right now, but I'm so thankful. From zero to 32, man, it was, I look back on some time, woo! And I'm looking, I'm on my, now I'm 50. And you start looking at stuff in your 50s. And you see things different. And you're in your 60s and your 70s and your 80s. See, that time is irrelevant to him. And you start looking at all this stuff. Do you view death like Christ? There's two types. It's interesting that two types of death. And maybe I'm, sometimes I forget that too. And this is why Jesus was so smooth in teaching the disciples so he could teach us, so he could teach our mamas and teach our daddy and teach our, and teach everybody else. It was powerful because there's only two types of death for the believer and the unbeliever. And brothers, I didn't realize how I looked at death like an unbeliever too much in this world. All we know the church logo, all we, you know, all, we, all that old stuff. I'm so, I'm past that. I don't need information. I want to be transformed, Lord. I want to understand. I laugh all these folks still crying, talking about this and that. And my men gone 30 years, 18 years, 10 years, 20 years, and they still losing their mind because they don't understand death. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't either until I got here. And let's look at this. There's two types. These things he said, and after that he said to them, our friend Lazarus sleeps. Now keep a mind on that. Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Mm. Now brothers, let me stop there for a second. We all know this. No one's going to meet Jesus until that great getting up morning. So guess what? My 38-year-old mom, let me make a plan to use my hands. She's resting. Oh, come on now. My, come on, my daughter. I mean, my, my daughter. My, well, my, my sister, she's resting. My daddy, he's resting. And I want to say, dang, 38, 34, 59, and they resting. And you know, when I look back on my life, my mama 38 years was hell, and yet I want to 
to be here some more. My sister's life was hell, and I want her to be here some more. Three babies by three different men that brought the baby to the system. I'd like to make it really plain. And some of you want to hold on to whatever you want to hold on to. And yet they in a better place than me, Petey. They in a better situation than me because they are sleeping. They are resting until that great getting up morning. Yeah. Yeah. Are you catch that later? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Some of you been crying about the wrong stuff. You ought to be crying about yourself. The one God done took on hold. They sleeping. They resting. They ain't got to go through the hell we going through today. Tomorrow and yesterday, they resting. When's the last time you had a good, peaceful sleep, restful night? When's the last time nothing got on you? When you were going to bed, when you're in the middle of the night, and you got up and the stuff was still there. When's the last time you could just sleep all the way through? Oh, come on. But... But I go that I may wake him up in my time. Then the disciples said, take the disciples out, Pastor Smith, Deacon Mays, trustees, other deaconess, people who should know better. Then the disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. Come on now. I, they, I, I'm, like, I'm like, how would y'all ask a question like that? That's like one of those Nicodemus questions. And we go on there like we the doctors. I pray that. Why you want him to get well? And come back to this old mean, evil world. Ah. So we get undo this, then I'll give you the things. However, Jesus spoke of his death. That they thought that he was speaking about taking rest in sleep. Man, I've been there many times myself. I can't tell you how many times I said, man, I wish my mama was still here. I'm human. I wish my sister was still here. I'm human. I wish my daddy was still here. I said, why do I want them? Come on. They resting. Waiting on that. Come on. Because you do. If you, if you don't know the word of God, then I'm going to go back. Because remember, when the great day comes, they all shall rise. And who shall rise first? The dead in Christ. Come on now. The dead in Christ. And then we all go run. Come on. If God came back to death and got us all. Come on now. So that's just the shell. She died with no legs. She died blind. But when I see her again, she's going to get her new And I won't get mad at other folks when I realize I'm like everybody else. Asking dumb questions, trying to figure this out. And God done made it plain, and I'm still wanting them back here. Selfishly, I want them back here. In this old mean, cantankerous world, high blood pressure, sugar diabetes, went through all this. Come on now. Don't look like I'm crazy. Who comes? I want you to name myself. I just talk about my parents. Who you want back? And why you want them back here? When they resting. Oh, I'm going to pick up. They resting, huh? They peaceful. So why do you want them back? To join this misery like you and I have? Oh, come on, man. God made this thing plain. You ain't going to get these kind of messes. They got to come from God. Called. I was confused, too, like the disciples. Oh, okay, he's going to get well then. He's coming back. Well, let me make it even plainer to you. Look at the first thing. I want you to think about this. The unbeliever. I, God gave me four or five nuggets. I'll put them up there for you. Take a picture of it. Hopefully, you're not an unbeliever. And hopefully, you don't know folk who are unbeliever. Because this is heck of a stuff for the unbeliever. I see why they don't want him to come back. Nothing encouraging about death in the unbeliever point. There's nothing encouraging. Matter of fact, Jesus spent a lot of his time warning people about not dying in this condition. 
Man, come on. God loved to make it plain to his people. He warned them, okay, I'm telling you, I ran a rich man. I you spend all your time getting money, doing worldly stuff, and now you want somebody to tip your tongue. It's too late because I told you to go to church. I told you to go to Sunday school. I told you to read the word. I told you to pray. I told you all that, but you were too busy saving the world. And the world stuff had your attention. And you bypass. Forsake not yourself. He said church ain't important. Why would he say forsake not yourself? For assembly of those of like faith. We come together to what? To draw. Sure, come y'all know the word. Then act like, come on. Then draw strength from one another. That's why I love praise time. Miss Johnson heard me say a lot about Kalisha. That's a beautiful praise. Because she was just talking to her mom about her job and how rewarding and how challenging it is. All in the same. And so then Colette can tell her what Miss Johnson said to encourage her. Oh, y'all ain't walking with me. And if she wasn't in, oh, y'all better hear me. God makes it plain. If she wasn't in church and they weren't connected to church, then we wouldn't hear this. I had no clue. Paul in Atlanta. I had no clue. I'm not preaching to cause you in Atlanta, cause you in New York. I'm just preaching to my people here in Harrisburg that wake up because God is coming back. And old folks say, don't get caught with your work undone. Now, I just cleaned it up now. Salvation's of the Lord. I'm not going to scare you. But the peace that he talks about here, the joy of salvation belongs to you. Yeah. And I see why folk ain't restful and ain't peaceful and angry and mad and cantankerous. To die without Jesus as the Savior meant hell. And brothers, guess what that means? You living in hell when? Right what? Right now. Because what I'm learning in the text is the absence of Jesus is what? Hell. So wherever you are in 24, walking around in Walmart today, walking around in Kroger, the reason why folks are always negative and contemporary and angry and evil and mad is because they walking around without the presence of Jesus. Eternal fire, that's some tough stuff. Yeah. Eternal punishment, yeah. that, I didn't say that. That's all in the word. You read, I told you, pay attention. You heard those scriptures read. And look what it says about a place. Did you not hear that in the scripture? Well, why are you getting mad at Pastor Smith for bringing the scriptures out to you? Mm. He hard. He's spitting and slobbering. Because I'm telling you to wake up. Wake up, because a place of weeping and gassing of teeth. I mean, this is what messed me up. They said the place is so dark that you can't even see right in front of you. Man, that's dark, because that's what I've learned about darkness. Eventually, if you stay, I won't teach this, if you stay in the room long enough, your eyes what? Oh, come on, thank you. But in this place, it's so dark that your eyes, when I was reading that, I said, whoa, what a nugget. It is so dark that your eyes never adjust. Wow. Oh, who wants to be here? No. Who's lined up to get there? Ain't nobody lined up to get there. And then look at the last nugget. Separated from Jesus Forever. I done spent enough on him. I'm getting here. <laughs> we done spent enough on that. So why is it important? So when you got family, friends, and co-workers that are talking and living an unbeliever's life, then you, I need to go back, take a picture of it. Because you got enough family, why is it important this, to give them Jesus? Because I just told you, look at them. Don't come calling the pastor. If you love them and you care about them enough, 
then you better make sure that they become believers and not in an unbeliever. Look at the believer. Ooh, Jesus. Most encouraging about the death of his believers. <laughs> we all know the stuff he said. That's why <laughs> Abraham, I always loved that, never really understood it. Now I understand it. Said, man, to be in the bosom of Abraham, our paradise, to be in his bosom, to where nothing can, look at, nothing can get to you. And let, see, Abraham's bosom is like paradise. It can't get to you unless God says, go play with him. See, it couldn't get to Job and your God said, go get him. But guess what? You played with him. You threw some stuff on him, but you didn't get his what? Ah, you didn't get it so. Come on now. Oh, you might have had some cancer in Deborah, but he shook it off of you. Amen. Praise God. Come on now. Oh, I don't know why this went to me, Chris. I don't know why we talked yesterday and you're going through and your blood is your blood. But guess what he's saying? I've got some blood that can't get contaminated. I've got some blood that we talk about is bigger. I know your earthly blood ain't all that good, but the blood of Jesus overrides the blood of your mama, the blood of your Daddy, the blood of your great person. Oh, you've been talking about the wrong blood. Yes, sir. Well, you give too much blood to that last name because you love that last name. And that last name ain't going to save I like my last name. I like East. I like Smith. I like Jesus better. <laughs> so you ain't gonna get me to brag on no Jesus name. You can get me to brag on no Smith name. I'm gonna brag on Jesus. I love my grandparents. I love my parents. But the name of Jesus, come on, that every sin, every time, come on now. He said he knew all sin and conquered it. Yes, sir. My daddy couldn't conquer it. My mama couldn't conquer it. My grandparents couldn't conquer it. Pastor Smith couldn't conquer it, but Jesus could conquer it. <laughs> ah, and I'm in some paradise with him, a prepared place. That's why John's one of my favorites. I'll go to a prepared place for you. And while I'm gone, look at it that powerful. He says, while I'm in the preparation stage, what did he say he's going to do for you? I'm going to leave you a comforter that's going to guide you. And lead you through this whole evil world. Because I'm preparing a place. I didn't get my mansion in down here in Hamburg, but I've got a mansion. Oh, y'all better walk with me. Some of you are so focused on getting the mansion down here because you don't realize you got the mansion of all mansions up there. Yeah. Yeah. A place, and look what he said this. A place. A restful peace slash sleep. And I just need to claim to you how restful and peaceful is your sleep. Why, why not? And Virginia got to answer that. Hey, you got too much of the world on your mind. And we know the devil's good at walking about to and fro, trying to knock you off. Come on. You went to bed worrying about it. You got up worrying about it. And don't tell me in this five, six, seven, eight hours, I hear it all the time, I can't sleep. And I've learned, because the old me would pounce on that. Well, what you doing that, can't, that you can't sleep? I don't have no problem sleeping. <laughs> well, you just wore out. Maybe, then you need to be wore out. <laughs> See, you, you can't come back to me because well, then you need to wear yourself out. Amen. So you can't wear yourself out doing worldly things, but see, you can wear your home now. When you're doing God's stuff, he'll give you the peace. He'll give you the rest. He will give you everything you need to make it through this old crazy world. And the disciples were just like us trying to figure out, what are you really talking about, Lord? He said, I'll make it plain to you. The point in time to die, but guess what? Death has no what? Has no victory over who? Jesus, right? He took the sting out of death, amen? So I understand now, what we see as death is not how he views death. Amen? Because he understands that the Father gave him to me, and I got one call. We're going to get out of here 14 and 15 now. Whose death should we be rejoicing over? 
I, I got a word for your husband, Sister D, because I was hoping he told me he was going to try to be here because he's really struggling. He's not struggling with the death. He, he, he spoke to me like he never spoke to me. He says, I'm not struggling with the death because I know they bet off. I'm struggling at how they died. Yeah. And I've been praying differently for him. Listen to me. God always gets me right on time. He's not struggling. Because I told him, I said, Gene, God gave me a word today. You know how your, your daughters were going? Yeah. Your daughters were going down a path and you said it yourself and coming through and all this. And God, sometimes we look and say, wow. God took him out of this age. God allowed this happen at this age. And we want to say, why, why would you want them to go through any kind of jail? Having babies out of wedlock. Going through all the stuff. Cars, just to say we got them here. Yeah. And God gave them some rest. And gave them some peace. And I, you know, I ain't going to never forget it because all she said, because that's why that was the funeral of all funerals. Because I'll never forget what she told. She says, I just want to live a little bit. Yeah. You live, mama? Daddy lived, and then she said, Pastor lived. He told his story. She see, every now and then the 21 year old just say, I want to live a little bit. And see, come on now. And I don't know, the bullet wasn't meant for her. She just happened to be at the house, and the bullet went to the house, and it hit her. And I'm telling you right now, every now and then, you're trying to figure out why. And God said, Don't worry about my why, because I got this. Oh, I know it's true. I don't preach old crazy. I preach real. I'm telling you, he told me that this week on the phone. Pastor, I know they're in a better place. I can't get over how they died. And guess what God gave me? It don't matter what said. And Jesus said to them plainly. Jesus don't give you no what you second guessing. And Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there. That you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. And David said, this is what I told him. When David cried and went nuts, waiting, because he hadn't had a word. But as soon as his son went on home, and guess what he did? And it's crazy in our mind. He got up, showered. Shaved, put on his Sunday's best, and went on moving. Yeah. And guess what he said? See, you gotta know the word. They can't come back. They can't come back. Who you should be rejoicing? They can't come back to you. But one day, I'm going to be. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm not going to let you lay back and wait and water with some stuff that you should not water with because you don't know the word of God. You're yeah, I preach long because I preach clear. Because I want you to understand this. I could have gave you a couple of things. You walked out of here and you're feeling good. I don't want you to feel good. I want you to be transformed. Right. They can't come to you. And I don't wish it on anybody. Right. 21. I don't understand it. It's not meant for me to understand. But he said, I'm going to give you the strength. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I've been praying for him totally different since our conversation. I know they're in a better place. I'm just mad at the system. He went on. You know, you done heard it all. Yeah. I'm mad at the lawyer. I'm mad at the sheriff. I'm mad at everybody because they aren't. It's just like they just said that's two old black girls. And I just let them go. And I said, man, look how we can get angry and get mad and get kind of angry. And God was trying to teach us to rejoice. All they needed was 21 years. Yeah. All they needed was 34 years. Yes. All she needed was 38 years. Yes. All he needed was 59 years. Yes. See, you trying to figure out. You trying to work something out with God. 
you try to hold on to something that you ain't got no control over anyway. That's why he said, love them while you can. Tell them all that you love them every day. Don't wait until they're on their deathbed. Call them in the morning. Call them in the night. I love her here, Mary Frank said. I got one on the right. I got one on the left. And making sure. I hope that a lot of families are like that. And making sure. I get excited right here, Miss Johnson. The boy getting upset because they just concerned. Because it was always Miss Johnson and Coach Johnson. And now the boy said, can mama do that? Yes, mama can do it. Yes, mama can do it. Because mama's not alone. You heard what she said. I'm just I've got the tree. I've got the father. I know you're going to walk with me. I've got the son. And I've got the Holy Spirit. Yes, <laughs> and baby, when I'm covered like that, mm, covered. I'm covered. covered. The sides, mm, yeah. the front, the back. The back. Yeah. And guess what I'm wearing? They can't get to me unless God wants me to get to me. Amen. Amen. So I'm rejoicing. Mm -hmm. I hope that you're going to rejoice with me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Let's go how I'm going to teach you how to rejoice. Who in my family? Huh. Who in my family? Because it starts there. It's not your job to see if they went to heaven or hell. You ain't got a place. Stop that. Quit trying to figure out where they are. Mm -hmm. You're going to go crazy. Yeah. That belongs to God. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I learned this. There's a many of folk who were believers just lived a hellish life. He said, how do you know that preacher? That's what he, David's story was to all of us. When he said, when David came to his senses, David didn't ask to get his salvation back. And so many people have taught that wrong for years. He said, restore it. Restore yeah. the joy yeah. of a salvation. Yeah. You see, so many of our family members and friends, because we let them go back. Mm -hmm. You knew they weren't living right. You knew they were living fabulous. And you just talking behind their back. Why can't you go to my front? And come on now, I don't look like I'm crazy now. Who in your family? Huh? Who, who were the true believers? They did not fear death because they knew where they were going. If, if, if. If Sister Alberta dies tonight, like you just said, guess what I heard her say today? I know where I'm going. She didn't say she's ready. Don't let you know. She said it loud. Matter of fact, I'm learning to listen. Matter of fact, I said, man, I'm glad I lived this long, but don't worry about me, because if I, if I don't wake up tomorrow, I know where I'm going. If you hear Mary Frances talk, she'll tell you, she's getting honest, we've been in Bible study, come. And she'll say, man, now a few years ago, I would have thought they'd been crying because my life wasn't lining up. It's a beautiful thing to say that your life is lining up. That when, you t when they go on home to glory, come on. That don't mean you're not going to shed some tears. Don't walk out here saying, Pastor said, I didn't say, so you can rejoice and shed tears. A homegoing celebration. Death is harmless to the believers. No matter how it happens. And I thank God for Brother Gene teaching me. Because many a times I got stuck in how it happened. Not why it happened. Oh, y'all better walk with me. That's a heck of a nugget there. Yeah. See, so many of you are living in how and not why. Right. Why not me, Lord? You birthed me. You knew me from my mother's womb. You knew I could handle this. Because Christ has taken the sting of death from us who believe on him. If I die right now, oh well, guess what I'm learning? You might not have church next Sunday, but you're going to have church, Dick and Dad. Don't do the family life. You're going to have church. And some of you are going to be talking. My wife, I'm, well, you know he loved to preach. Let's go and preach Sunday. I want you to catch. Because what are we learning? Life what? Goes on. And you trying to figure out the why. 
The how. You getting caught up in some stuff that you shouldn't get caught up in. And let's take it home. <laughs> the reason why we're rejoicing, the reason why I had to make it plainly to them, the 21-year-old precious daughter is resting. She's going to get to see mom and daddy again. Yes. You knew, you told the story. You didn't hide it, sister girl. You, you told the story about your daughters and I knew. Wasn't no hiding. See, some people try to hide stuff on their kids. And that's why they continue to get in a mess. See, you didn't hide it. You didn't call it. Like I said, it messed me up. I don't mess with it. That's why folks still talk about that funeral. Lauren, Petey, y'all know what I'm talking about. They still talk about that one because it hit home. Because she said, I, I, I just want to live a little bit. Deacon May told his story in his 20s and 30s. You know how wild we were? I'm just 21. Can't I live a little bit? And was at a place. The bullet was for somebody else and it hit her. A good girl. This is what was crazy. Not some random way out here going crazy, girl. She just wanted to live a little bit. And I asked myself, what would have happened when I was in Ponderosa and they started shooting and the bullet wasn't for me, but it hit me? I've been some places that the bullet went up in there and I'm like, who's shooting? I got all scared and nervous. Man, let me go home. That's why, I'm, Petey, we talk here, that's why I don't go nowhere now. I don't want the people crazy. People shooting for looking at you wrong. You look at me hard like you want something. I just shot your pal. So I'm going to keep my bus home and look at you crazy from home. <laughs> on the rain camera. I'm going to look at you mean from the rain camera. Car. You look at people mean now, they'll just pull out a gun and shoot you. That's stabbing now for no reason. And y'all laughing. Y'all know this world's crazy out here because ain't no, nothing containing them. And then he says, it has no time to it. You've heard me say, the dash belongs to Christ. It has no timetable. We try to put time on it. All we know is that a time to be born and a time to die. And all we ever say is, I hope we get the promise. And I'm going to quit saying that because why do you want the promise if you ain't giving God your first fruit? See, God's making it plain. Why do you want to live all along and God ain't the first thing in your mind? Don't come talking that silly stuff to me anymore because they put a whole lot. It's a gateway to God's presence. A life to be lived in his eternal existence. I'm glad I'm on that believer's thing. Been through a lot. Got some sin on me. Still got some smell of it. Amen. Come on now. But it ain't got hold of me no more. Amen. So you can still have the smell on you, but it don't got a hold of you. For the minute, man, I know. I spend a lot of time in that stuff, man. I try to get that smell off it. Every now and then pride pops back up. Every now and then lust pops back up. Every now and then anger pops back up. Every, come on now, you start talking and putting yours in there. See, they ain't, don't act like you so holy now. It don't pop back up. Every now and then, I don't cuss like I used to, but every now and then they hit a button and they all fall back out. I say, man, I thought I was past that. Ooh, every now and then garbage mouth comes. Now, come on now. Every now and then. See, not, not every day, but every now and then. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It'll come back on you. Yes, it will. Now we know we should be rejoicing for our loved ones that are sleeping slash resting. Amen. Be careful because they mean good intentions. Miss Johnson, I don't know you, Miss Coach. I ain't never said that to her. What was somebody going to miss that? I know you missed him. How you doing? <laughs> we don't talk about that. I'm worried about a whole nother level. I'm seeing Miss Johnson. Man, that's right. People ask me, and people constantly say, how's Miss Johnson doing? Fine. She's a believer. She loved the Lord. What do you think she was going to do? Go in the house, shut the blinds, never come out, and die? So I want to make it plain. What do you think she was going to do? She loved the Lord, too. I had some precious talk privately with Coach and them right there. Coach was existing over the last six months to a year. She'll tell you, I was there after seeing him. Now he ain't existing. He's resting. He's resting. He's resting. He's sleeping. And then that great getting up morning. 
see, go see her Albert. How do I know? Because the Bible says you would know them what? As you knew them here. Yes. But they're going to be in a perfected body. Yes, I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be bad. That's going to be an awesome body. I think this body's ours, but think about a perfected body. Yeah. No blemish, no curve. Come on. Is it all ripped up? <laughs> is, is it a six pack? I don't know, Lord. Come on now. What's it look like? See, y'all, I have a good time with him. Y'all laughing. What does a perfected body look like? I'm going to have a bald head and I'm going to have some hair again. <laughs> is he going to get some good hair now? I might have some good hair. See, y'all, I talk to him like that. See, I love the word of God. It's holding it. What? Oh, my God. Leaving and resting. It's crazy that you called yesterday. Just talking about that. You were talking about that. Your mom, 18 years, she's been sleeping and resting. 1988, mama been sleeping and resting since 80. Oh, come on. That's good news, isn't it? Yeah. That's new work rejoicing. That's new work going over time. That's new to let folks know. Oh, you miss your mamas and daddy. You miss your kids. You miss them. But baby, learn to rejoice in that missing. That's what I want you to get out of this text. Yes, it's part of the Learn to rejoice. And I pray that every one of you in here, under the sound of my voice, when you walk out of here, 